Okay, hi, I'm sat here with uh, Sandra Nelson, who is a doctoral uh, candidate at the University of Gothenburg and the University of Dalarna, which are both in Sweden. Um, and I understand, um, Sandra, that your research is in new religious movements, but particularly with reference to children, is that right? Yes, that's right. I'm interested in uh, children being uh, brought up in new religious movements and uh, particularly, uh, actually, in Sweden uh, today. Right, so is that people who've already been brought up as children or are kind of kids, children now? Uh, children now. Uh, both, actually, but my focus will be on children now. And are there any particular new religious movements that you've specialised on or picked out as interesting particularly? Um, uh, I've been uh, looking into the Hare Krishnas and uh, the Family International and some of these kind of um, 60s uh, movements that uh, sprung out of the counterculture. Uh, but I've also been looking at um, Scientology and Jehovah's Witnesses and, um, well, some of these movements. So quite a broad spread of uh, yes. movements. Have you started yet in your research to kind of have any findings or start to get a feel for what's going on? Um, well, uh, yes. Um, I could say I haven't done very much, but I've been in contact with these movements for a couple of years before I started. And um, so I've done some research already. And uh, what I think that I can see is that it is uh, a very big difference between being brought up in these movements, uh, at least in Sweden, now and if we compare uh, just uh, 20 years ago or even 10 years ago uh, there is a bit, very big difference in how children are uh, viewed and how they are being brought up and that is what I want to show that um, uh, changes within these movements are very fast and mm. so there could be a, a vast difference between even between siblings that one oh, really? uh, could have a very one upbringing and the other one can have a very different kind of upbringing within the same movement. Yeah. That's interesting. Does anything characterize their attitude towards children 10 or 20 years ago and that, that shifted? In what way has it shifted, do you think, most, most mm -hmm. noticeably? I think that uh, 20 or even 30, 20, mm -hmm. 30 years ago, uh, that in many movements, um, there was a very strict uh, view on children and uh, there was an emphasis on, on children um, uh, as being uh, a bit problematic, uh, being okay. teenagers, the first generation of teenagers and they were uh, rebellious in, in many of these movements and they kind of had to, um, to control them in, in many ways and also uh, in some movements, uh, for instance uh, in the Hare Krishna movement and also in the Family International, there was um, uh, they used uh, kind of harsh discipline sometimes with the, the children, which I don't see at all now. Uh, oh, really? uh, on the contrary, now they are actually more uh, curled, I would say, <laughs> or, or like, yes, very free. Everybody's uh, so more kind of liberal, yes. I suppose we might call it. Yeah. But that's interesting to find that that's been so rapid a shift, it's not been an attempt to maintain the same view of them. Uh, but I think it's it's because of the experiences uh, mm. that uh, that these children had, and then they kind of turned uh, the whole way around uh, because of mm. bad experiences that the the first generation of children had. Some of them. So many of these movements, the people who are now in charge would have or involved in the kind of senior positions, or a lot mm. a lot of them would have been the first generation of people brought up in that movement. I guess. Yes. Yes. So that has a big influence on their. Um, View and their views of child raising have changed a lot. Um, so, in research, that's the, your main focus is going to be on their attitudes to child raising in the future. It's going to be an eye towards what's likely to happen in the future. Do you think or uh, no? What I want to do because in Sweden, uh, uh, as internationally also, but in Sweden particularly, we have this debate on children being brought up in these movements, mm. and there is a very big lack of knowledge uh, for these changes, these rapid changes, and and. In that debate, uh, the children are rarely or uh, never heard. And what I want to do is interview children from their own oh, yeah. perspective so that we can get a very updated uh, view of what they feel are uh, good or bad things with growing up in these yeah. movements and also how they feel 
uh, towards um, the mainstream society and, and all this. So I want to like, bring the children's voices uh, into this debate. So normally the debate's about them, but they don't really have a voice in it. So you're hoping to... Uh, yes, they don't have a voice, but still, uh, and still um, there are discussions, uh, political discussions on how to limit these uh, movements out of concern for the children, because right. uh, people are concerned that they are not um, brought up well uh, right. in these movements. And do you think, in terms of what you've begun to find so far, that relates to traditional Swedish ideas about child rearing? Are there kind of things to do with the culture that specifically how Swedes see themselves in relation to child rearing and then see what's happening in these movements and so kind of clash there? Um, maybe, yes, I think so. In, in a way, in Sweden, uh, the view of children is very uh, idealistic and mm. uh, and we have very uh, strong laws between uh, prohibiting uh, um, corporal punishment and, yep. and uh, abuse and everything. Um, so, yes, I think the Swedish context is, is a bit uh, stra um, different from, from the general uh, European context, yeah. for instance. Yeah. Well, certainly the stereotype we have in Britain of Sweden is that the child ring is very liberal and very yes, kind of, um, yes. yeah, free, kind of free range and um, yeah. without corporal punishment. Uh, so it was a kind of unique context for these movements. Yes. That's really interesting. Um, thank you. Um, and I guess you're hoping to complete this in the next few years through interviews with both the children and members of the movement, presumably. Movements. Yes, I am part of a bigger project. with, with uh, We are three people, so I will be uh, focusing on the children and then the right. other two uh, persons will be focusing on uh, adults who grew up also in this in this uh, movement, so the the parents of the these children mm. actually. So presumably within the movements, so there's a certain amount of anxiety one would imagine amongst the leaders about the idea of children leaving. Like how will the movements kind of have momentum to continue if there's an exodus, as it were, mm. of children? Mm. So there kind of must be some anxiety within the movements about will the children stay in. Um, yes, but I think that the, the because these movements uh, they are kind of old, <laughs> so to They're speak. Old uh, religious movements. Yes, yes. yes. So uh, I think that biggest anxiety has already been. Uh, I think that was one of the oh, really? uh, the reasons for these harsh disciplines and everything. And now they are uh, uh, thinking a bit uh, more about well, if we can't get them to really stay and be very much involved, how can we get them to at least leave in a positive way so they don't mm. have to come into conflict with the family and and so they can still be positive towards the movement. So they, they don't feel very negative and kind of uh, unhappy about their upbringing and talk about it a lot, make a big, kind of, make a problem for the movements, I guess. No. It's kind of interesting. Mm. Um, that's very interesting. I think um, I've begun to learn a lot and what I'd like to do is perhaps talk to you again when you're near the end and you um, see whether what you kind of got a feel for turned out to be the case um, when you finish your research. Yes. Thank you.